Hi, this is John Dexter, the creator of Dime Short Detective, Alpha Dogs, and Space Cruising. You're listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. This is his fifth time on the show which is a wonderful milestone for any podcast host, and he's a very talented individual. He's having internet issues, so we're going audio here today, but we're joined by the creator of Alpha Dogs and, of course, Dime Store Detective and Space Cruising, John Dexter. How are you doing today? Good. How's it going? Thanks for uh, taking the time out to uh, do an interview with me, and my internet was stinking, so I had to do just audio, but that's all good. You know, it's all right. The message is the main thing. You know, uh, we don't always have to see the person behind the mask, so to speak. But they'll have to look at past interviews to see your your amazing uh, stature, and of course, then there's the sandwich here as well. Yeah, well, I was gonna, I was gonna say, it probably sells better than uh, if they don't see my face. <laughs> <laughs> if I could go faceless, I would too. But you know, I, I'm stuck this way. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking today. Yeah, my name is John Dexter. I'm the creator of Alpha Dogs that most people know me from. Uh, I also am the writer of Dempster Detective that I'll be uh, launching issue four on August 13 on Kickstarter. It's um, If you like supernatural or noir stories, then you'd really enjoy it. It goes back and forth um, 40 years about this detective who um, is after the serial killer and he finds the newest victim's body over the braille grounds. The detective father and uncle buried multiple bodies 40 years ago when they were involved with this moonshine war. A rival gang uh, named the Dixie Mafia came in and has tried to push this family out of business that have been three generations strong of uh, selling moonshine. And in the course of the story, the detective's father and uncle um, go into the Appalachian Mountains to find a new place to um, hide their still because it's been broken up and these guys have been battling this family. And they inadvertently find this hidden cave in the Appalachian Mountains and end up releasing this evil entity that's been trapped in the cave for hundreds of years by the Cherokee. So we kind of, like I said, we go back and forth through time. Um, Whenever we're in the present, it's in color. And whenever we go back to when the detective is eight years old, raised by moonshiners, it's in black and white. So that way it's easy for the audience, I'm sorry, readers to not to get confused. We go back and forth. And uh, I think it kind of has a cool feel to it. It's got that noir feel, um, the old school comic feel to it. So it kind of is the best of both worlds. Yeah, that's what I've loved about your the earlier times we've talked about it. I believe you're on for issues one and two. We skipped three somehow, <laughs> but but it's still <laughs> a great story overall. I, I love the fact that you really dive into like your your inspirations and your creative roots there. I think that's something that is kind of needed these days. We need a fresh influx of creative comics that are actually made by people. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a huge fan of Ed Brubaker, but also of Humphrey Bogart, you know, the old 1940s movies and just, you know, gets the name from the dime store novels of the 30s, the aesthetics to the old pulp novels. I just really just love that nostalgia factor to it. You know, it's it's kind of like part Stephen King's it and part L.A. Confidential or True Detective. It's kind of the best of both worlds, dime store detective, because you got a really cool thriller, a mystery that's involved in it's that old hard boiled stories that, you know, they don't make a lot of, um, you know, LA confidential is the last one that really pops up into my head. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm curious though, how does issue four deepen the mystery or expand the world of dime store detective? And I'll ask how many issues you have afterwards. (laughs) There's going to be eight issues in all. So this will be the halfway point for the series. So it's, It's short, but it's uh, sweet. (laughs) You're not too long, not too short. Um, So with issue four, the Moonshine War really takes off. Um, The last issue, there was kind of an incident where the two brothers bust up their rivals at their bar and kind of beat the crap out of them. (laughs) 
And then there's a murder that takes place in issue three. Well, now issue four, the gang is going to retaliate. Now, th- this is a this is a whole gang against these basically these two brothers. <laughs> so it gets crazy, you know, and um, I don't have to give too much away, but the uncle has been possessed by this evil entity. And so he obviously has an enhanced power, you know, and strength. So we're going to see how that plays out in issue four. And then the mystery really deepens with the serial killer. And he's um, Detective McInder in the present with Detective Kelly um, kind of slowly unpeel the onion. And um, there's also a cool flashback in the beginning of the story that kind of explains the uh, love triangle between McInder, Detective Kelly and uh, Detective Kelly's partner, uh, Frank. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, if you like noir, if you like mystery, if you like even true crime, then you're going to really enjoy Dumpster Detective. Are we going to see any fresh faces in, in issue four that we haven't seen before? And can you tell us about them? Um, for fresh faces, um, no, no. We're going to be building up this relationship because when I write stories, you know, your world building, you have a lot of exposition with that. But I believe in writing the story, you you get out right out in the gate, you hook them. And then once you start caring for these characters, then you can give them some backstory. Um, because if you start out just with a lot of exposition and a lot of talking heads, you're just going to kill your story and it's going to bore people. So what I like to do is um, get into the story, get into the inciting incident. You know, we start out with this dead body hanging in a tree mm. when uh dumpster detective begins. And so now once we get interested in the story, now we kind of get these characters backstories and that's what we're going to get with uh dumpster detective four. So there's, like I said, we start out with the past explaining this love triangle uh, in dumpster detective and then we really get into the moonshine war and things really, um, really kind of explode into that. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And people who read I'm Sure Detective, who are fans of it, will really love that. Now we kind of get an explanation of why uh, the characters are why they are in these relationships. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love the fact that you're really building out this world. And I think that's something that can get lost when you get really invested in your own creations. So how do you try to separate, you know, your love of dimes or detective and of course the, the pulp genre and your own creative writing style? Well, I think it just, you know, anytime you write, I, I write a story anyway, it's a long time coming and it's a long time of just building it up and um, sorting it out in your head and taking notes. So it's a long time of of getting things right before we even you know start typing on anything for me anyway um so it's just through the years my love of different genres or different stories it just i'll be interested in something for so long and just kind of invest in that for maybe even in numbers of years before that kind of becomes a little bit of uh, an amalgamation for the story with certain incidents or maybe even a line. When you're writing this thing out, you're tr- turning your characters, you're keeping track of the storylines and the multiple story arcs that you have here. But how do you keep the suspense and the intrigue high in this issue? Boy, it's it's kind of in some ways rudimentary writing, but then other ways it's it's kind of tough because, you know, it's eight issues. So you're having to still build that uh, story arc in each issue but then connect to the next one but i suppose it's just um i don't know it's it's like giving a writing class (laughs) you know (laughs) you you have a incident and then there's this tension so for example in dumpster detective four the 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 son um in the present reflects on back when he was a kid and him and his dad are being chased through the streets uh, in their car by the rival gang. And um, there's an auto accident. You find out that um, they've also a gang of them have are after his brother. And so we have a lot of tension building up to that. And then we discover, Oh my God, well, not to give away something, but a uh, very exciting and terrible thing happens in there. So um you know, it's just kind of building your story arc per issue. You just have to 
continue to do that. I, I know that's not a great answer. I know, I know. I know you don't want to spoil it, obviously, because you want people to read it. So so yeah. I can understand where you're coming from. It's it's like you're teasing people to, to get the issues, though. You've been to a lot of comic conventions, and I, I know there's a, probably a couple coming up in, of course, the, the end of summer here into fall. Readers that come up, or potential readers that come up to your table here, what can they anticipate in terms of, you know, this visual style and, and of course, the art? when it comes to Dime Store Detective. And we'll, we'll talk briefly about your other works as well. Yeah. Um, well, I think all the covers, because I have uh, Stone Tower Studios, they've done all of my cover art for my comics. And, you know, my belief is that it's the art that um, that brings them in and then it's the uh, writing that, keep that, you know, makes them stay. That's a terrible... <laughs> I really screwed up that analogy. Um, but... Um, yeah, I think, well, for one thing, I'm always just going to grab a person. I don't care. Um, I believe in what I write, and I believe that uh, people are going to enjoy Dime Store Detective when they read it. So I have a lot more confident, confidence when I grab somebody at my table and introduce myself because they don't know me from Adam and do my pitch. And usually, you know, Dime Store Detective is a complex story. You know, like I said, we spanned uh, 40 years in this. So usually I'd tell them it's, you know, think of Stephen King's It meets True Detective. And that's kind of what you get with Dime Store Detective. It's got a noir style to it that older people I think will enjoy. But, you know, people love crime mysteries. I mean, people love true um, true crime mystery as well or in, in crime fiction. So it's kind of an easy sell, really. <laughs> You know, it's 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 got a cool mystery to it. It's got the hard boiled noir. I had a uh, oh the writer of Babylon Five walk oh, wow. over to my table at a Comic Con. He said, "Oh, I saw I saw this dime store detective, you know, pulp. I was sold." So I went over and bought my comics. So <laughs> it was it was kind of a thrill to have him wow. uh, stop by. So, but uh, yeah, it's kind of an easy sell. Now, granted. It's next to uh, Alpha Dogs, and Alpha Dogs outsells Dampster Detective because everybody loves dogs, and it is a great story. So yeah, Alpha Dogs is kind of my flagship title, I guess you could say. I mean, none of them I don't think are better than the other. It's just, you know, the, it's very dynamic, and it's superhero and it's dogs. So it's um, it usually is the thing that brings them over to the table, and then, you know, I can uh, sometimes uh, pitch them on Dampster Detective. Of course, uh, we never got to talk about this, and and that's probably because of our schedules. But I saw you do space cruising. Got to talk to me about that because that's like my wheelhouse. I love sci-fi, and I saw those covers, and I'm like, oh my god, this is just perfect. <laughs> yeah, it was a great, it was a great, um, fun comic book. If you like sci-fi, if you like comedy, you know, it's space balls, and it's <laughs> Star Wars, and it's Galaxy Quest. It's, it was a um, story actually I wrote back when I was a teenager. And then years later in 2009 through 2012, I had uh, produced it. You know, I paid for the art. But I ended up getting low on money. And I just kind of sighed. I, I did the um, lettering myself. And I can tell you, use a professional because <laughs> my lettering was horrible. So I just... <laughs> And I'm the kind of person that, you know, I'll do something for a while and I love it. I'll be obsessed with it. And then I just, and then I don't ever touch it again. And that's basically what happened with Space Cruising. And then thanks to the success of the trade paperback for Alpha Dogs, I was able to put more money into finalizing, doing a few more pages, hiring somebody to do my lettering, somebody hiring somebody to do the cover art. You know, I was able to kind of get the funds to justify it. So that's when I released um, Space Cruising. So, yeah, it's basically this um, we're far into the future. Earth has become inhabitable for humans. So they travel light years away to these two planets that are sustainable for human life. But surprise, surprise, there's aliens <laughs> here, 300 different races. And unlike most stories where the aliens are the advanced race. It's actually on the flip side and the humans are the advanced race. So much like, you know, foreign countries or foreigners that come over to the United States, they 
might not care too much for Americans, but they love the culture. Well, these aliens are walking around in like NBA jerseys or uh, rap costumes or Revolutionary War costumes. Uh, the main character, one of the three main characters, Ace, who's an alien, is the pilot of the ship. He um, wears a cowboy hat and World War uh, Two bomber jacket and uh, wears an I shot JR t shirt, which younger readers are not have- going to have any idea what I'm talking yeah. about, but it was a it was a very famous catchers from the eighties. And then you have, have uh, the third, another person, uh, Yuri, who's a enhanced Bushido warrior. Mm. And finally there's uh Phobos, this obsolete Android. These three outcasts go roam the galaxy, trying to find earthly artifacts to make a quick buck. <laughs> they end up becoming um, in, intertwined in this galactic um event this terrible weapon that could be unleashed on people and they have to save the galaxy so it's uh it's got a lot of comedy and it's got a lot of adventure so yeah issue one is about ready to go to the printer but if they want any of my comics space crews and alpha dogs they'll all be available in the dime store detective um campaign so then how do you juggle the different tones and narratives between Dime Store Detective, Alpha Dogs, and Space Cruising? Uh, probably because I have a severe ADHD. <laughs> so <laughs> I can become obsessed with something and I will become totally obsessed with a story. And that's all I work on and think about. I wrote all eight issues of Elf, um, sorry, of Dime Store Detective in, in the span of a month because I just that's all I lived and breathed it for months and months and months and did some notes. And then finally I just couldn't take it anymore. And I was writing an issue a day and then coming back the next day and editing it and going to the next one. So it's, and then I'll get tired of it, sick of it. And I never want to look at it again. And then I'll move on to a different genre. I just, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not one of these people that are, you know, write one genre, you know, like receiving Kings or something. I, if it's something I'm into, then I'm really into it. And um, then I move on to something totally different, like um, well, space cruise in the sci-fi genre and Alpha Dogs is your superhero genre. And then with Dime Store Detective, that super, that, um, you know, this supernatural noir story. Oh, that, that's really good. It, it gives you flexibility and range too, because I, I think unless you're really good at a single genre, the fact that you can, flip between it, whether it's ADHD induced or not, the fact that you can actively write in different genres just, I think, gives you a breath of fresh air in your creativity, I believe. Yeah, I think so too. And when I write something, I want to write the very best. I want to write the very best science fiction story. I want to write. So if I don't think I can top that type of genre, that type of story, then I, I really am not interested in doing it. So I like to believe that when you pick up a dime store detective or a space cruise or alpha dogs, you're not going to find something like that similar on the shelf. Um, that's, that's kind of how I go about it. And, you know, I just, I can't stand repetition and, you know, um, you know, basically vomiting you know, something that you've read and heard a million times. That's why I probably will never do a superhero story because I mean, what's new under the sun, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're never going to outdo Spider-Man, you know, <laughs> exactly. Or Deadpool or Wolverine or, or, you know, whoever else is your favorite this particular hour. That's why I love interviewing like indie creators like yourself and comic creators that are, are actively just enjoying what they're doing and they're sharing it with the masses. And I think that's why, you know, I, I love chatting with, with yourself, John and others that come on the show because you just, you just do something creative and amazing and, and the world just has to know about it. So, you know, I, I always love having you on here. Talk about the Kickstarter campaign that's coming up. Obviously, when is it and uh, what type of tiers do we have this time around? It's going to be launching August 13th, uh, most likely at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's going to be uh, quite a bit of tiers. Like you can buy all four issues that are out cur- currently. The digital is five bucks. The high, the lowest tier is to only twelve dollars. Uh, comics aren't cheap to create, <laughs> and as much as uh, it's uh, been growing every Kickstarter, it's still yet to be profitable. So um, you kind of got to put a premium on your. I mean, I'm sure everybody will tell you that's run a Kickstarter. You don't do it for money. You do it for the love of creating, you know, your art. So um, 
there's a lot of so i think there's a 13 dollar tier and a 14 dollar tier for per cover there's three covers they're amazing um done by stone tower studio artists and also um i got dave um yeah david hayes he's gonna be doing one of his he does a lot of the cover art for pulp books and i saw his artwork and i'm like oh my god he's got i gotta hire him for <laughs> dime store detective so he does the uh people call it the, um the man possessed cover you'll know it's a movie poster with a being it has the look of the 1940s it's really awesome and then you have the other covers that are also of course really incredible so um, nothing crazy, you know, as far as price points, you know, it's 12 through 14 per cover. That's pretty good for variant covers. A lot of people charge $20, sometimes 25. And then there's a tier, like I said, where you can get, um, the trade paperback of dime store. I'm sorry, of <laughs> alpha dogs volume one, which encompasses all of the issues so far published of alpha dogs. Then, um, you can also get issue one of Space Cruise and, and all of um, one through four of Dempster Detective. So it's every issue, every comic I've ever done. Um, and I can assure you there are a lot of fun. There's going to be some big news coming. I don't know if it'll come um, by the time the issue airs, but I've, some really cool things will be happening with um, my comics here in 2025. So yeah. keep your, yeah, keep your out and, um, and then there's one where you can another it's called a special edition comic where I sign it. And also your name is in the uh, um, thank you page at the end of the comic. So your name will be listed on the thank you page and it's signed in. And uh, so that's kind of cool. People enjoy that. That's always done well. And there's another tier, which is going to be very limited. I think I've only allowing five. You get a, an original OA page of Dime Store Detective issue two. So when Dime Store Detective first dis, um, came out, I had a different artist for issue one and half of issue two. Well, he she draws um, the 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 pages where now Dime Store Detective is digital. So there's only very limited of the original artwork for the pages of Dime Store Detective, and I'll be offering issue two on there and. I don't know how much longer I'll be doing that because, you know, you want to keep your own comic book art, but in the, in the task of raising money to get this comic made, then, then I put that tier on there. Well, at least keep one page for yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep quite a bit. So I've, <laughs> I've not sold very, I think I've sold five pages so far. So yeah, I don't want to give away too many. Cause like I said, there's only so many, um, because it switched from uh, drawings to digital. digital. You know, we could keep going here, but how can we support you? Where can we, can we find you and anything else you'd like to promote, obviously, because I want to have you back on for your next major project, whatever that is. Yeah. So you can uh, catch me at, I'm on Facebook. You just type in John Dexter. I should come up towards the top and I'm also on Insta at uh, it's at alpha underscore dogs underscore comic. And I'm on X or Twitter, however you want to call it, at real alpha dogs. So you can follow me there. Um, and like I said, the Kickstarter launches August 13th for Dimes for Detective. Hopefully you check it out. The trailer is incredible. Um, if I can't sell you on my trailers, then I don't know what else to do because <laughs> the trailers just enhance the story so much. And you can see all of the trailers on my Kickstarter page if you just type in John Dexter or one of my titles, Space Cruise and Alpha Dogs and Dumpster Detective. I want to see, you know, the next issue of Alpha Dogs. You definitely have to come back for Space Cruising because, you know, I'm I'm remiss for not having you on to talk about that because we would have had a blast with that one for yeah, sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You, of course, find this interview and 1,200 plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's T-W-O, not the number two. That gets you somewhere else you don't want to go to. But because the website's going through a revamp, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. The podcast is back. Search Two Geeks Talking wherever you get your podcasts. It's on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, and, and about 16 others that you can listen to it. But as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.